guys, so video number two, we're talking about VL and the leaf side. So, um, pretty much, you hit up VL. If I was a company driver first before I switched over to the lease, so um, pretty much how it went, I was sitting in the bunk after a month of driving, and I was like, man, I'm making good money. I had only had I had like a four or five month plan to be with VL before I actually started driving Big Daddy, and um, I was sitting in the bunk. I said, man, I know I'm only planning to be here for four months, so um, you know these 20, 24, 25, 26 dollars a week isn't bad but if I can double that and bring home five thousand a week for the next four months man that'd be perfect so I hit up VL this is right around the time where they had the the new lease trucks coming in which was supposed to be in 2019 so I hit them up I said hey um, I'm in a company truck right now I'd like to switch on over to the lease side and um, I'm gonna tell you right now if you tell them you want to get in a lease truck they will snap on you because you going to get in a lease to purchase truck okay they will tell you that oh you are you oh so you're interested in the lease to purchase okay this ain't no lease truck you know, they don't want you to call it a lease truck and that's what I was calling it you know you're interested in the lease to purchase you're like oh yeah sure I'm interested in that so um apparently now they're doing a soft pool on your credit um I have credit karma I didn't even get notified about it but um, they do send you some type of DocuSign document allowing them to pull your credit. So, um, like I said, I did that after being with VL after a month. So, um, from my understanding, the same dispatch you have on the company side, if you come in as a company driver first and switch over to lease to purchase, you keep the same dispatcher. Um, I was kind of already not feeling my dispatcher anymore at the time. I'm not a hard person to get along with, but um, I don't like nobody playing with my money. I mean, I don't think anybody would like anybody playing with their money if you're being honest about it. So, um, they said, okay, we'll put you on the list. And I told them, I said, well, I was under the uh, impression there was no list, no wedding list or anything, right? They said, yeah, but um, apparently they was opening up a regional division and a local division and a box truck division and all the other type of divisions, so they were slam packed. So they were like, yeah, well, you know, if you don't hear back from us in a week, um, give us a call back. So um, I'll probably say that same day they sent me the DocuSign for the credit check. Um, I have good credit, so that was no problem. Um, they did that. I signed it. Came back. Nothing. Um, another month passed by, and I'm like, well, damn, I, ain't, I actually had forgot all about it because um, I was going through my little issues with the um, dispatcher I was having. Uh, I called them up. I said, hey, um, this is such and such a company truck. I was wanting to know whatever happened about the lease. You know, I had applied to talk to you guys about it a month ago. Somebody said they reached back out to me. I never heard anything back. They said, um, oh, um, apparently now they've been hiring all these new people, dispatchers, new dispatchers, new dispatchers, new recruiters, new such and such. So I was talking to new people and um, they wasn't sure on what was going on and this and that. So they said they would call me back. All right. So I hung up the phone. Another month went by, never heard anything back. So now by this time, I'm on the verge of quitting. All right, so if you've watched my other video when I was talking about the company side, you understand why I was getting ready to quit. So I was getting ready to quit. I was in the process of buying my, my next truck and um, cash, by the way. And that deal actually fell through. So if I would have got that second truck, um, I would have called VL, which would have been that Tuesday, to tell him, like, hey, go ahead and route me back up to Chicago so I can go ahead and drop the truck off. That's going to, you know, that's going to be it for me. And I had actually started already cleaning the truck out, which was the Volvo. Um, the day the deal fell through, VL called me. Hey, we got a new batch of lease trucks in. We're going to route you up to Chicago. Um, you have any questions? And I was just like... No, because they caught me off guard. So, um, hung up. All right, bet it is what it is. So, um, dispatcher calls me the next day. At this time, I, I was on hold time. Dispatcher calls me, hey, they said they're going to write you up here because you're going to be an owner up now. I was like, yeah, sure. Um, let's see what it do. Um, took, what, three days to get me up there? 
and two days, so the day before I got there, dispatch, dispatch, um, recruiter called me back, hey, I forgot to inform you, we've had to make some changes on the new lease trucks, so now you're paying um, $2,500 escrow, and the lease payments are no longer $499, the lease payments are now $649, so they went up $150. I asked them why. I said, okay, well, why are the payments going up? And they were saying, well, they had to pay more for the trucks, so they're selling them to us for more. Uh, it is what it is. I'm not going to lie. When she told me that, I was just, I got discouraged instantly. And I told them, I said, well, what I'll do is I'll come and look over the truck, and um, we'll go from there. I'm not going to uh, say yes or no right now. I'll come and look over the truck. They're like, yeah, that's no problem. You know, come look at it. You know, if you like it, cool. If not, Hey, you continue being a company driver. So, um, when they first started the lease, and this is from my understanding, if I'm wrong, somebody can tell me I'm wrong. The first original lease, there was no escrows or down payments. You know, you're paying $499, and the truck's gonna have about 400,000 miles. That's from what I was under the impression, and that's technically what I was looking for. Um, when I got up there, I delivered my load. Um, I believe it was a Thursday. Thursday morning and then I hauled ass to the yard, to the office. But they do not have a yard, an actual yard. They, they run out of an office building that has like two or three docks at the back of it. And I mean, there's space, it's, it's crap there, period. So I went up there in the Volvo with my trailer and I was pretty I was pretty much there for like four hours trying to get up out of there because it was just people everywhere, cars everywhere, trucks everywhere. And um, yeah, so if you, do, if you go to the yard, or to that office, try not to go with a trailer. So if you have to go drop that trailer at the little drop lot that they have, hey, do it. It'll make it a lot easier for you to bop till in and bop till out. Um, even if you're switching from company to lease, um, and I would say that would be the best bet. I could, I get there to the yard, I look at the truck, they, had, they gave me the option to pick between two trucks, which was this dark blue truck that came from Martin, and it was a light blue truck. I'm not familiar where the light blue truck came from, but these two trucks came from two different dealerships. Um, when I spoke to the mechanic, he was telling me to pretty much get this truck, even though it had a thousand miles more than the other truck. Um, these, this truck so-called, or from whichever place this truck came from, they're maintained a little better from what he said. But so, hey, I appreciate him telling me that. Um, this is a 2017 Freightliner Cascadia. The truck had 539,000 miles when I got it. Um, when you do get the truck, they, when you come to look at the truck, they do allow you to take it on a test drive. They allow you to take it to any mechanic of your choosing. Um, the truck comes with no, no warranty. You don't have no grace period like most companies when you're leasing to where you start in a lease truck and they give you two or three weeks before a payment. They don't have that here. So you get in it, that pay period of when you got in it, you already got a truck note and escrow coming out. So when I asked him about the escrow, anybody that knows about escrow, escrow is technically an account for you. Pretty much meaning that it would technically be like another maintenance account. So um, when I asked them about the escrow, they said, oh, well the escrow, you can't use the escrow. It's like when you go and get an apartment and you pay a down payment or you pay your, your um, deposit so I told them I said so pretty much it's not an escrow it's a down payment for the truck so I'm paying you $2,500 down for this truck in payments is pretty much what you're saying so but I think they're just trying to word it different because I mean if people don't know you don't know um, like I said I looked over the truck this truck right here it had no issues to the site the tires were decent um, it was cleaned it was already uh, detailed came with two brand new mattresses so um, to sign the lease, you sign your trip, your um, your um, you're gonna docu sign two documents or two sets of documents. You're gonna docu sign one for the lease to purchase of this truck, and then you're gonna docu sign another document stating that they're you're leased on to via trucking, meaning that you're gonna get whatever percentage you agree to get with leasing. Know, whether you're reefer or drive-in drive-in the driver gets paid 78% if I'm not mistaken nope 
reefer, the driver gets paid 78% if I'm not mistaken. Drive-in, the driver gets paid 80%. I am drive-in. So, um, I looked over the truck. I didn't test drive it or anything because honestly, I was ready to get rolling. Um, hooked up to my trailer. I met my new dispatcher at the time. He was a nice young dude. Who honestly, uh, me and him were damn good to damn good with each other. Um, he seemed it seemed like he gets me. But if you watch my other video, I did say I kind of trained him to dispatch me the way I wanted to be dispatched. Because before I came to VL, I was picking my own loads, running my own truck. So. But um, I got rolling in the truck, um, started accumulating some money, some nice checks. Um, I think on my third load, I had a blowout on one of the tires on the um, drives. One of my drives, I had a blowout. I had to cover that. I had to cover that. Um, but VL did use their discount. They um, through Goodyear, and um, apparently the drive came out to three hundred and five dollars. I believe three hundred three hundred dollars around that area. For a brand new uh, version tire, um, some things I've noticed about this lease: um, the fuel card. And if anybody with VL that is watching this that is on lease side, please get your own fuel card, man. That the fuel card that you get from VL is, I mean, it's nice and pretty. Don't get me wrong, but um, you're not getting any fuel discounts. You're not getting any discounts. Now I can guarantee you, VL is getting discounts on that fuel card. Because nobody is going to get a fuel car without getting some type of discount on it. So um, they're obviously pocketing the, dis the, um, the savings and um, charging you fuel full price. Um, I am going to make another video about the fuel car for VL drivers or anybody that's leasing the truck for what I have. And it works good for me. Um, I don't use their fuel card anymore. Um, I don't plan to use a fuel card anymore, to be honest with you. Um, I have, you know, we don't get no fuel surcharges. You're not getting no fuel discounts or any of that. Um, on the lease side, um, I pretty much pulled 95% hazmat. I, I, that's it. They're gonna try to only find me hazmat loads. I don't. I mean, I, I didn't ask for it like that, but they're paying the best. So um, I've been in my lease truck about a month now, and um, I'm averaging 9,500 to 10,000 dollars a week gross. From that, I'm taking home half of that. So, pretty much, I'm grossing $10,000. And this was before, this was while using their fuel card. So now that I'm gonna be using my fuel card, the only thing that's gonna be coming out of my settlement as far as a fixed cost through VL is gonna be the truck note of $649 and their 20%. So if I'm grossing my $10,000, VL is pretty much making $2,000 of the 20% that they're getting, plus they're making the 649 from me off the, um, the truck payment. So they're making $2,649 from me a week as long as I gross uh, $10,000. Now, if I, if I was using the fuel card, they would obviously be making a little bit more money because I don't know what the discounts are on that fuel card. I don't care. But um, like I said, I already got my own fuel card and I'm going to do a video on that next. Um, my truck. I have been having a issue with my truck uh, to where I have the check engine light comes on and it'll be on for two or three days, then it'll go off for two or three days and it comes back on. And this usually happens when I'm getting loaded or unloaded. So whenever I put weight on the truck, check engine light will either come on, once I get unloaded, it'll go off. Or vice versa, check engine light will be off while I'm loaded, I get empty, check engine light comes on. Um, it has not affected the way the truck was driving. When I first got in this truck and that happened, it happened, the check engine light came on the next day. Um, I think it was a, a mind mental thing, but I felt like the truck was losing power. So I was thinking the fuel filters were clogged, um, but I think I was just so used to that Volvo. And um, I mean, that Volvo was a beast, man. And, um, got in this truck and it just seemed like it was kind of underpowered especially with a heavy load or even with a light load at first it seemed like it was underpowered so I called the BL, told him about it I said hey I'm, 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 I'm feeling like maybe one of the fuel filters might be clogged he told me to go to, to a TA and get it replaced this was the second day of me being in this truck I went to the TA got all three fuel filters replaced it cost me like $230 I paid for the I paid for it up front 
with my own business uh, out of my own business account. So if you're coming over here, man, you need to already have your money straight. I would recommend personally if you don't already have at least two to three thousand dollars put up that you can just throw in a, in one of these lease trucks, come and be a company driver for a month or two, and um and then switch on over, or come and take your chances. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if you have an issue, VA will probably upfront the cost and then take it out of your settlement. Um, you can do go that way if you want to. Um, other than the check engine light and me changing the filters, I have not had any issues with this truck. Um, I do third row pre-trips. And then, like I said, I did have a tire blowout, which was still in the first week that I was in this truck. So I was already out of, what, almost $550 the first week of being in this truck um, like I said because of the blowout and, um, and then I realized that blowout actually took out my quarter fender but I don't think that's a DOT violation so I didn't worry about going ahead and getting that replaced I may replace it eventually I may not the truck does come with an APU the APU does work fine um, yeah other than that I mean like I said I haven't had any issues um, like I said this truck had over a half a million miles when I got in it. I think it had, if I'm not mistaken, it had 439,000 miles, 539,000 miles. As of right now, I'm at 551,000 miles and I'm still rolling. Um, I do like this truck. I don't plan on doing any extra stuff to this truck. I did buy some chrome door handles, which were like $20. I did buy the chrome spike lugs for the truck, which was like $200. And um, I bought some LED lights that didn't even work. That was twenty dollars, but I did buy all that through my business account, and um, I do have all the receipts. Um, I will do a truck tour on here. Um, anybody that's familiar with the Cascadias from twenty about twenty twelve to twenty eighteen old body style, um, the cabinet that was behind the uh, passenger seat took a grinder and I cut that bitch out. Um, now I have my refrigerator and microwave down there. Because at first I had my refrigerator on the top bunk, but I want my bunk space back. Had that space. I kind of feel claustrophobic when my that top bunk is down. You know, um, some things to mention. The truck is governed at 70 miles per hour. This truck that I'm in, it has low, low gears. So we rocking 241 gears or the, the rear ends or the rear ratios on this truck. So this truck will not pull a heel good at all. Um, I am loaded with 20,000 in the box right now. And even on like slight little grades, man, this truck, it'll drop down five to six miles per hour. Um, it is what it is. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but, um, you know, I don't like, uh, I'll be passing somebody, you know, they're governed at 65, get ready to hit a hill, you know, I hop over to the right lane and they're passing me going up and I don't drop down to like 63 or 61. But the perks of that, this truck is averaging 7.7 .7 miles per gallon um, since I've been in it, so that's a good thing. Um, you know, I'm saving money on my fuel, which is allowing me to also go faster and farther. Um, I'm averaging about 1,100 miles to the full tank. And, um, yeah, so you know, if you come over here, you want one of these. There is a guy that's leasing one of the Volvos. I don't know too much information on it. I did ask him about it. He told me some stuff. Um, if I had the chance to choose between the Volvo and this truck, I probably would have chose the Volvo because it had lower miles and it was, in my opinion, a little more comfortable. But when it comes to money-wise, um, I think this truck is probably the best fit because in the Volvo, I was averaging 6.3 miles per gallon compared to here, I'm averaging 7.7 .7 miles per gallon. Uh, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else to tell you guys on the lease side. Um, like I said, the orientation process whether you're a company driver or a lease side is not even an actual orientation you're coming in just picking up stuff but you're waiting to meet with the people so you can be sitting in the office waiting three to four hours maybe even five hours to meet the dispatcher to meet the dispatch manager to meet the um, recruiter to meet the safety person you know to get your tablet your ELD to get all your permits you know um, they do take a picture of the truck before you leave um, whether you're on the company side or the lease side, they are going to take four pictures of the truck, all four different angles. On the company side, you are given load locks, you're given straps, you're given chains, 
um, a tablet, a fuel card, uh, yeah, and um, on the company side, you will be charged for that if you don't return it when you leave. They'll give you a printout of what, um, of what they'll charge you if you leave and it's not in that truck, bring that truck back. Um, on, the, on the lease side, you're not given, you're not given any of that. You do keep the same fuel card if you come from the company side to the lease side. You do keep the same tablet. Um, I'm the first person in this truck from VL, so I don't have any license plate yet. I don't have any easy pass or free pass, so I'm going through every scale that's open that pulls me in. Um, I was able to keep the same trailer, which is what I wanted. Um, I think my trailers are 2019, so um, you know. All my loads are live loads and live unloads, no dropping hooks over here. Um, dang, I'm trying to make sure that's, that's, that's it. Um, for some stuff that people might not know about VL, you do get a, a monthly report of your speeding, your heart breaking, your heart cornerings. Um, I haven't, nobody's ever called me or coached me on anything. And um, I mean, my, my truck is governed at 70, I'm doing 70 everywhere. Technically, I'm doing 70 everywhere that I can safely, even though I am technically speeding. But I, I'm gonna run 70 when I can. Um, I, I am a little more cautious in this truck on things that I do when it comes to making my turns because I have to pay for everything on this truck and the trailer. So there's no trailer fee, you know. But it, it obviously, you using the trailer is coming out of that 20% that they're getting, or 22% they're getting if you're on a reefer. But um, I have to um, pay for maintenance on the trailer. So um, if a tire blows, that's on me. Um, if a light go out needs to be fixed, that's on me. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So um, if you're thinking about the lease side, I hope this information kind of helped you. Like I said, you can be profitable here. If you stay in a, a freight area, I don't know, I stay in Texas, so that's a freight area. I can get home often. So um, I was home for five days, and I'm actually on my the load I have now is on its way to Texas, which is also allowing me to do 34 at home. So, um, you know, with that, I, I'm not complaining at all. So I appreciate you guys for watching. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you like the content, go ahead and like. If you don't like it, you can hit the dislike button. Um, stay tuned. Uh, keep Tipping to drop more videos. Um, I do have videos saved, man. It's just that I just have a hard time putting it together. You know, I watch these other guys. They post YouTube videos every damn day. I don't see how they do it. Even when I'm sitting here, I mean, I'm literally sitting here on the phone. I'm networking with people. I'm, I'm doing all this stuff to where I have to force myself to get off the phone or stop doing what I'm doing, whether I'm doing research to try to make myself make make a video. So, um, yeah, guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one.